Good morning, friends. This is Steve from Southern Illinois again. And uh, it's a balmy 30 degrees out here today. Uh, much better than last week. But as you can see here, let me let you see a little bit better. Yeah, as you can see, we have had a dramatic weather event here. You've been reading about Texas, but Southern Illinois is a part of Texas, didn't you know? And uh, uh, we have had more snow here than I have seen in forever. If you check my uh, Facebook feed, you'll see that I actually did a snow sculpture, and I think it's been, well, it's been close to two decades since I've done, done that, since I've had, we've had enough snow for me to do that. But no fear, okay? We don't live in Michigan, okay? Uh, by Wednesday, this is all going to be completely gone, and Illinois will be back to the land of dry roads and cold mud. But in the meantime, I've had a crash refresher in snow removal. That's right, I've been shoveling snow this week. I've done my drive at least three times. Uh, um, and as I cleared the driveway, of course, my mind was working right along with my body. So, as I remember it, there are two ways to clear snow. You can either shovel it or you can shove it. Okay? Uh, shoveling snow involves uh, filling your snow shovel full to the brim with snow and then defying gravity and lifting it and throwing it with all your might as far as you can throw it. Now, this method of snow removal is really sexy. It shows off your muscles and it makes you look and feel really macho. This is also the pathway to strained backs for young bucks and for heart attacks for men who are much older than me, okay? Um, shoving snow, on the other hand, I tried to explain this to Vivian and she had a hard time understanding it. Shoving snow, you never fill your shovel full to begin with. You start with just a little edge of the snow on your shovel and as you push it more and more snow accumulates so that by the time you get to the end, if you've calculated right, the, sh snubble, the shovel is full of snow, but it's not spilling over the edge. And only then do you give a quick, quick scoop and, and throw. So when you shove snow, you spend most of your time apparently aimlessly walking back and forth, back and forth, and the snow only flies once every cycle. It's not very sexy and it's not very macho. Now I have heard grown men get into arguments about whether shoveling or shoving snow is the right way to do it. And if you look at historical photographs of snow removal before me mechanical snow removers were, were available, You'll see both illustrated. You'll see lines of men clearing parking lots, shoveling it up in the air, shoveling it up in the air. And you'll also see men lined up and going across the parking lot uh, like um, harvesters going through a field, staggered and each man shoving and then another coming behind and shoving. Now, I lived in places uh, that it snowed much more regularly than Southern Illinois as I was growing up. Um, and uh, my observation was that all of this argument about shoving versus shoveling was kind of ridiculous because sometimes shoveling was what was required and worked best, and sometimes shoving worked best. It was really an um, issue of shovel and shove, not shovel or shove. It is very easy to reduce life to black and white issues, right and wrong. Sometimes that's helpful, 
but more often it just introduces conflict into our relationships. The simple fact is that snow removal requires shovel and shove, not shovel or shove. What's important is to get the snow removed. Which brings me to my second thought. Righteous men shovel snow. I probably learned this from my dad. He was a righteous shoveler. When it snowed, we boys were expected to be right out there with dad clearing the driveway and the walkway. A righteous man did not make his wife slippy slide on ice. And if work called him away, it was us boys who were then responsible to finish the job and accountable to dad if he came home and there was ice or snow left where there should be none. Now, as I grew up, there were decades when I was so busy at work that I couldn't care for my family the way my father taught me to. Uh, I'm afraid that my wife actually had to shovel her own snow or slippy slide on ice or snowpack. So, as... I was forced into retirement by my health, I've actually taken joy in the opportunity to shovel snow when there was snow. And my neighbors will tell you, okay, uh, there may be only an inch of snow on the ground and it may be 30, inch, 30 degrees and uh, ready to melt, uh, but Steve still gets out there and shovels the snow. And you can call it penance for uh, years of neglect of, of my family or you can call it OCD. I don't care what you call it, but it gives me joy, okay? My kids may be grown and flown to the ends of the world, but I still enjoy shoveling snow. It's a, it's a love language for me. But I derive more than pleasure from it. I, I hate to confess this, but I take pride in my snow shoveling. You know, see, as I'm out there shoveling snow, I look over at my neighbor's driveway and ha, they aren't shoveling. I'm a righteous snow shoveler. Uh, yeah, uh-huh. You see, there are a lot of people in Southern Illinois who are passive when it comes to snow. They expect the sun to do it all for them and they never lift a shovel regardless of how much snow falls. They just wait for the sun to come out and melt the snow and if it doesn't then oh my goodness they weep and they wail oh this is so rough you know we can't get out of our driveway to come to work okay the snow is too deep and then there's my favorite reaction. God is in control. He will melt the snow when it's time for me to go to work. I've actually had employees say that to me, okay? None of my neighbors, you understand. My, my neighbors are real country folk, okay? Uh, it doesn't matter, matter how much snow is there or how much the, the road commissioner has piled the snow at, at the end of our driveway, okay? They just get in their pickups or their SUVs and they plow through it and they're on the road. Okay, um, But it's easy for me to feel self-righteous about my snow shoveling. That's why God gave me such a wonderful wife. You see, uh, yesterday when I was talking to Vivian about my, show snuffling, my snow shoveling and my thoughts about snow shoveling and my self-righteous judgment of my neighbors, she just quietly said, you know, Steve, the sun does a really good job of removing snow down here. And the sun removes all of your snow, too. They are just more patient than you are. Boom! My bubble was busted. My balloon of self-righteous pride was in tatters all around me. My black and white world of shovelers and slackers 
men who were righteous and men who were, yeah, the proactive and the passive. It collapsed and sh shattered into pieces all around me. I think there's a spiritual lesson there for me. Black and white thinking is always a prelude to self-righteousness for me and pride. Whether I'm talking about snow or COVID or my walk with God. So, there are my thoughts on shoveling snow, okay? In a few days, all the snow that you see behind me is going to be gone. But I need your support this week. Our health system here in Southern Illinois is on the brink of collapse and people are starting to break. Ambulancers are sitting unused because there are no EMTs to staff them. Hospital beds are empty because there are no nurses to care for the patients. College EMT training programs can't find people who are willing, they can't fill one third of the slots in their training programs. Nursing, nursing program enrollment is down. Medical school enrollment around the country is down. People don't want to be frontline healthcare workers right now. And I can empathize with them, okay? Frontline health workers have been thrown under the bus repeatedly during the COVID epidemic by politicians, by hospitals, by their neighbors who continue to rebel against such simple measures as wearing a mask or social distancing in grocery stores or hand sanitization. And things haven't improved with the change of regime in Washington. In fact, they've gotten worse. At least here in southern Illinois, it appears that a directive has come out to stop testing everybody. Uh, if one person in a family tests positive, they discourage everybody else in the family from testing, whether they're sick or not. Well, you don't need to know if you have COVID or not, just quarantine. But the effect is to make it appear that COVID is disappearing, which is exactly what's happening. Except that it isn't. It just appears to be disappearing. The truth is that we're seeing just as much in the emergency room. Those workers who remain on the front line are under severe stress. Do you remember my sharing earlier last month about my experience of watching babies die in Africa and how traumatic that was for me. Well, that's happening here now, today. People with heart attacks. But we can't get an ambulance to transport them to a hospital that can provide a heart cath or an intervention. People who have strokes and bleeding in their brain, but we can't transfer them because there's no ambulance and the doctors, the nurses, feel absolutely horrible as they watch people suffer and die. Worse, they know that as soon as the fear of COVID dies down, families and lawyers are gonna be standing in line to point fingers at them and condemn them for those deaths to accuse them of negligence. And let me tell you, the, the sense of helplessness and anger and futility is growing and doctors and nurses are starting to act in ways they never would have acted a year ago. And this isn't just happening in rural Illinois. I have eyes on the ground in St. Louis and in Indianapolis. In Indianapolis, one of my friends had to watch a patient with COVID pneumonia deteriorate to the point 
where he required emergency ventilator treatment and he was only 10 minutes drive from the hospital but they couldn't get an ambulance to transfer him okay healthcare workers around the nation here in the United States are facing the same impossible dilemma that healthcare workers in the rest of the world have been facing all year but we aren't prepared for it we are less prepared for this than we were for the COVID epidemic itself. So I beg you, support your healthcare workers. Pray for them, yes. But more importantly, stop the rebellion. Mask, distance, wash your hands, demand testing when you're sick, go for testing when you're sick, for, with any respiratory or, or stomach problems. We'd say we will say thank you to you with our with our whole hearts. Be safe, my friends. Be prudent. But above all, keep looking up. Some snow will fall, but don't make it black or white. Just let it be snow. I'll see you next week. <laughs>